Usually when I cook a rich Italian style duck ragu, it does consist of at least 10 to 12 ingredients, but not this one. I'm gonna show you how to make a duck ragu with five ingredients and it's absolutely delicious. It also takes no time at all to cook, which means more time eating and of course, drinking to go with it. So I've got some confit of duck here. Now these days you can find some pre-cooked confit of duck. Essentially it's duck that's been slowly cooked, in particular duck legs. And if you can't find it at your supermarket, then you can also go to your Chinese takeaway store and you can use a whole Chinese duck. It works a treat for this recipe. So I've just been heating this up, warming up the duck legs, uh, so it's going to be easier to take the meat off the bone. So we'll take the duck legs out and we'll just rest them so they cool slightly so it's easier to shred. And all of this duck fat, well, that is flavour. You'll want about one to two tablespoons of that duck fat left in the pan. So now for some extra flavours. Garlic, I've got a few cloves of garlic. You can finely chop it if you like or just roughly slice it as I'm going to do. If you wanted to, you could even leave them whole and just bruise them just to infuse that duck fat there. I kind of like the slivers of garlic so you get just a really nice, almost intense garlic flavour with this because it goes nicely with our tomato passata. So into the duck fat. Oh, and duck fat and garlic smell so good. It's going to smell even better now when I add some sage. So very classic flavours that go with duck, sage and garlic. And be quite generous with the sage because Sage is a hard herb. You do need to cook it down slightly. You don't want to be sprinkling it on at the end. You want to cook it in the duck fat with that beautiful garlic. So I've got about 10 of the sage leaves. Okay, we'll just give that a toss. And this is where you want to keep an eye on the garlic because you want it to soften. You want it to go slightly golden but you don't want it to burn because it will make a bitter sauce and we want a really perfume sauce. And you can see there's little bits of that duck in there. That's fantastic, I want that like that. Now for the tomato. I don't want whole peeled tomatoes, I don't want crushed tomatoes. I want tomato passata, which is tomato puree because I just want this to be a really smooth sauce. So in with that. And passata is quite plain, so we do need some salt. So a pinch of salt. Don't forget, confit of duck has some salt in it because confit of duck essentially is cured in salt and then it's cooked in duck fat for a long time. So don't go too crazy with the salt, just two simple pinches like that. We'll give that a swirl. I also like some pepper. You could add some fresh chilli to this too if you like. I'm going to keep it very simple, minimal ingredients, so the kiddies can eat this one too. This is going to come to the boil now, then I'll reduce it for about five minutes, which gives me just enough time to take the meat off the confit of duck bones. All right, this duck is looking good, so now it can go straight back into our tomato sauce. And we want to allow those flavours to mingle for another five minutes and the sauce is done. Then all I need to do is cook my fresh pasta. So this pasta is almost cooked, so it gives me enough time to pour a glass of wine to go with this gorgeous pasta dish. And usually with duck, you would associate it with a Pinot Noir, but if you love your Pinot Noirs, you are going to absolutely love this residence Montepulciano. In fact, the grapes grow right behind us. It's medium bodied, it's elegant, and it goes so well with poultry and duck. So a little glass. Look at that gorgeous colour. Fantastic. And the pasta is ready, so it's time to toss. I don't like to strain my pasta. I like to just get some tongs. Maybe a little bit messy, but that's okay. We're gonna grab our pasta strands and straight into our sauce. Now, by doing this, we're adding some of that starchy water, and that is a good thing because it's going to give us a lovely glossy sauce and it's going to help the sauce stick to the pasta. Now, 
you know I love cheese, so I do need to add some cheese to this. You could add some Parmesan cheese or my absolute favourite, pepper pecorino. You can get this at a lot of delis. You can also just use good old classic pecorino. I like it because it has a slight bite to it and it's a little funkier than Parmesan. So a good grating of that. And now we'll toss. I'm actually just going to use my tongs just to carefully coat everything together. So this pasta is going to continue to drink up all of that beautiful sauce. So I don't want it to dry out. So what I like to do is grab a spoon and get some of this starchy water and add it to the pan. All of my Italian friends that are chefs, they insist that I do this and it really does make a difference to the end result. Gone are the days of boiling pasta and popping the sauce on top. You really need to mix everything together just like that. And you know, if I was at home, I would just pop this in the middle of the table and let everyone serve it, but I want to plate one up just for me. So we'll just grab a generous spoonful and in the center, and you can see the sauce has not gone a dark color. It's still vibrant. It's got that gorgeous streak of the duck through that. And it only took 15 minutes to make. That's all you need to make a gorgeous pasta like this. Don't forget to get some of those sage leaves in there some more pecorino and this time I want a different style of texture so I'm just going to use a peeler just to grate a few shavings over the top. This is a dish if you didn't want to do with duck you could absolutely do with some leftover chicken it works a treat but really with this Montepulciano and this duck I feel like I'm in Italy but even better than Italy I'm in the Barossa and the grapes are grown just there how good's that? Cheers!